And now let me introduce um, our second speaker of the day, Xavi, um, who is a former senior director of data um, at Strava. And she is also a former analytics professional, former engineer. And uh, she spent the last 16 years trying to help shape products at different companies. Um, please take the stage. What a beautiful audience. Um, hi, everyone. I go by the she, her pronouns. My name is Shalvi Vaklu, and I, am, I flew in from San Francisco to attend this talk, and I'm so excited to see so many people caring about this topic. Um, so just to get started, um, what is self-advocacy? I'm curious how many people have spent any time thinking about this before you saw this on the agenda today. And also, don't mind me. I'm going to be coughing a little bit. I've had a little bit of an allergic thing for a month, but that should be fine. <clears throat> so self-advocacy, put very simply, is just speaking up for yourself and for your interest. It's a, it's a really simple enough concept. If you need something, if you need something that makes you more efficient, if you need something that makes you a little happier, um, you just ask for it. So pretty simple concept, but inherently, all of us, when we understand and when we prioritize and when we communicate what it is that we need to the people who can help us actually get there, that is a really powerful concept for us to focus on for our careers. So simple concepts are not always easy to put in practice, mostly because many of us don't really have the skills that are taught like, I was never taught um, any skill in, there was no uh, cl class in college which said, here's how to become better at advocating for yourself. That was not a concept that any of us really studied. So for me, I have always thought a lot about this, and I'm, I broke it down, that why is self-advocacy hard? Why is it hard for some of us to actually ask for what we need? And for many of us, the, some of the reasons that start off are cultural. So I am Indian, I grew up in India, I now live in the US, but maybe some of you can resonate that we come from cultures where talking about yourself or even highlighting what it is that you need or even highlighting your achievements is not something that's considered culturally acceptable. So I was speaking to someone last night and they said the same thing, that there are many cultures where if you say something about yourself, like if you say, hey, yeah, there's something cool that I did, it's almost seen as a negative. They're like, why are you praising yourself? Or why are you, why are you uh, highlighting your own, your own thing? It, it only matters if somebody else highlights it. So there are some cultural reasons that people have which make it difficult. There are also some uh, reasons that are gendered. Um, so I'm happy to see there's a little bit of variety in the audience um, in terms of just gender diversity. And I know that wherever I have given this talk, it's always uh, the women in the audience seem to resonate with this topic a lot more. Because in society, we've had these sort of, uh, a little bit of a subtext of more women or underrepresented genders are almost given the signal that, hey, don't, don't, don't draw too much attention to yourself or don't go out there, don't be too loud, like don't be, don't be seen too much or heard, heard too much. Um, and for some people, it's implicit. For some people, it's explicit. But regardless, again, as a training, it is just more common that people from underrepresented genders are given those hidden signals um, about not, not asking for too much, because already they don't feel like they belong in a lot of places. <clears throat> Other reasons might be societal. So in society, we are often trained, again, subconsciously maybe, that if you see something which is a little, which looks even a little bit flashy or even a little bit salesy, you're almost taught to ignore that signal because there's that subtext that this is an ad. Uh, somebody is advertising and you're, you're almost taught to ignore it. So there's a lot more hidden signals like that where in society we are just trained to ignore anything that looks like self-promotion, anything that looks like somebody is doing something out of the norm, that they're not just doing their thing and going on, um, they're actually highlighting it and they're expecting to be rewarded for it. So overall, um, one of the things that I feel keeps coming up 
is that through some of the cultural, gendered, societal messages, it almost gets integrated into our own inner voice. That we have an inner voice that keeps telling us that it is not normal to ask for what we need, that it is not normal to advocate for ourselves or to, or to raise awareness for the things that we care about and we need. And that is not external, that is something that we have internalized through these other messages that we keep, that we keep hearing over and over again. <clears throat> so hopefully that explains some of the reasons why self-advocacy might be hard. Maybe some of these reasons resonate with you and it's okay if they don't, um, because the whole point of it is that if you are good at self-advocacy, that's okay, but there might be somebody else who's not. And it should never be something that's isolating, that if someone is struggling with self-advocacy, they need the help, they need the, the sort of support for them to do something different. And that's where I think leaders such as yourself come in to, to, this, to this topic. So I, um, you know, when, when I was coming to this, uh, to, to Stretch Conference, I was excited because it's, I'm, I'm very happy that um, at this conference we're caring about this topic because um, so many of you are in positions where even if you're not struggling with self-advocacy, you can help focus on it for your teams. Um, if you have spent your career getting better at self-advocacy, you know, just moving forward and, uh, and, and raising awareness for things that you need, uh, your team might not be in that, in that position. So here are three reasons that I think it is important for leaders to care about this. Uh, one is empowered teams lead to better business outcomes. If a team is empowered, if they feel like they can take ownership of their outcomes, their results, and they, that they can actually drive to get the, get the results that they care about, that is gonna to lead to better business outcomes. Because what happens is that teams that actually speak up, and you know, I, I have my teams who come and say, hey, why is the company talking about X, Y, and Z, and they're not caring about this basic piece of technology that we need for us to do our jobs better? Like, I would not hear about it if they didn't come and tell me, because I'm not doing that work day to day. I'm not, I'm not in the weeds. So when teams are empowered to ask for what they need, uh, that makes them more efficient. That actually is something that helps the business bottom line do, do better, because uh, the business is then able to sort of just move, move forward. <clears throat> the other reason why leaders must care, and this is especially crucial, I think, now in tech, when uh, we are trying to attract more diverse teams and people from all sorts of backgrounds, is that uh, if you think about it, um, again, using my own example, I grew up in India where self-advocacy was not common. If I had grown up in the US, I might have had a very different take on it. It might have come easier for me. But I have appreciated um, managers who saw that it was not normal for me to highlight my work in settings that mattered. And those, those managers who cared and said, hey, you must go and talk about your work in X, Y, and Z forum, it really made a huge difference because they understood that it was not, it was not that I wasn't doing great work, it was just that I didn't know how to talk about it. So leaders who take that a very intentional and proactive step to shape their teams, to go talk about their work, um, talk about it in a good way, talk about it in a way that inspires confidence. It is, it is something that helps directly for di diversity and inclusion, because you are then not just rewarding the people who, for whom this, comes, this muscle is, is a default, but you're, you're, taking, you're taking a proactive step towards it. Um, and the final uh, reason that I think it's really, really important is risk reduction. At the end of the day, all of us as leaders, we are responsible for moving the needle forward on our business outcomes. And worrying about things like attrition, um, about inefficiency, about resentment, like how many of us have had people on our teams who have, during a one-on-one, -on -one come and said, hey, why does this other person get a promotion and I don't? And you know, a, a lot of times, like, you don't hear about it, you don't hear, you don't hear that statement until people are really resentful and they're really upset and they don't understand what it is that they're not doing um, that's not getting them that result. 
But if you make it a habit on your teams that people come and they raise these concerns, they, they ask what they can do to be, to be rising through the ranks, to be getting a raise, it really helps. So at the end of the day, like this is also, it directly affects the business. Um, having people on your team with less resentment, more, uh, you know, less likely to, to att uh, attrition out of your team is, is, is a good thing. <clears throat> so, self-advocacy, if you, again, frame it to your, I mean, hopefully to yourself if you need it, but also to your teams, it is ultimately something that you do as an investment for your career. And I really believe that this is the single most important muscle that you can build, um, especially in corporate careers where it's not just you running your own business, um, but it's you, know, you playing the game of, of corporate life, of how you, how you succeed, and things like that. So the better you get at self-advocacy, that muscle, uh, the better that investment goes. Because ultimately, what we all have to do is we have to get better at um, being comfortable, genuine, and just practiced in how we advocate for ourselves. And this is something that I feel we can all build. And if your team does not understand why it is important for them to do it, um, I think a lot of people like a higher pay. That's uh, hopefully, hopefully that's, that's something that's common. Um, when it comes to making money, whether it's negoti negotiating your salary when you just start, or whether it's negotiating a raise after you have worked at a job for some time, higher pay requires you to actually showcase your work, showcase your value, and translate that value in a way that resonates. So understanding this is how my business cares about value, and this is how I highlight it and make that pitch that my work directly contributes to the company making more money, that's an important, uh, that's an important sort of pitch to be able to practice and, 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 and have it, have it uh, you know, just have it, have it handy for when you really need it. And ultimately, everybody adds value in some way, but it is important for you to be able to explain that value to the people who are in a position to give you a higher pay. So this is one very good reason why, why, why this should be sort of pushed for. Another reason, you know, kind of tied to the higher pay, but also like very specifically, like sometimes it's not just about the pay, sometimes it's about the acknowledgement that you have gone from engineer to senior engineer to lead engineer and, 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 and things like that. So promotions in every company <laughs> or in every situation are dependent on you clearly articulating your value, that here is what you are doing, here is how it's aligned with someone who is at a more senior level, and here is why it makes sense for you to be given that acknowledgement from the company to, to, get, to, to get to that next step. So again, um, sometimes that the promotion itself can come with a higher pay, sometimes those are two independent conversations, but regardless, it is something that uh, if you have a sponsor at work, they need reminders of why it makes sense for you to um, you know, consistently be showing that progression towards the next level. And resources. So this is not something that I think only individual contributors would care about, but even leaders such as yourself. Your ability to get resources also depends on you being able to articulate why whatever you're working on is important, why it's fun, why it's solving something that's, 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 that's necessary. So when you are able to explain to people, like let's say you are a leader, you're trying to get more people to join your project, maybe you're hiring, and maybe you want to hire some really talented, um, uh, talented people who are out there in the market. If you can't explain why, what you're doing is good, is great, and that they should join you, like it's better for their careers if they join you, that's again, that's again a little bit of a gap. So it's not just something that people who are junior in their career have to do it. Even if you're really senior in your career, your ability to attract talent, your ability to attract good people and good resources, maybe it's funding that's required, and maybe you have to make that pitch uh, for that funding. So all of that requires you to, again, 
advocate for yourself, advocate for what you need, and explain why this is something that someone else needs too. Um, so overall, like all of all of sort of the examples I gave, like ultimately success depends on your ability to uh, be very crisp in explaining what it is that you need, why it's maybe in the other person's best interest as well that that they need it too, and uh, why you are valuable and why everybody should sort of care about care about that that value that brings. So with all of this, I think what helps is like, this is just the why, like why is, uh, why is this uh, stuff important? But um, what I'd like to get into is, um, again, like just a quick recap, like self-advocacy is good for our careers. And the thing to remember is every time you are trying to do something, there is buy-in required from people who have no idea how, 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 how what you do is actually done. Um, so I think I, I started my career as an engineer, and there was, almost this, there was almost this subtext of, well, you just need to write your code. You don't, you know, you don't need to talk. Nobody, nobody needs to hear what you're saying. Um, and that was totally wrong, um, because always my code has to be explained. Like, there's, there's an output to it. There's, a, there's some stakeholder who has to understand what I'm doing. And if they don't understand that even what they consider like a simple, a simple project is complicated, it requires some unique skills that I have, um, they might be disappointed. They're like, why is this taking you three days? Like, it feels like you should just write one line of code and it should be done. So getting that buy-in from stakeholders, which adds that little bit of um, just more, uh, more, more understanding of what it is that you do, how you do it, is, is, is super important. It's something that really matters for our careers. And I would say that advocating for what you need is also, at the end of the day, advocating for your end customer. So if you are building a product, whether, again, you might be an engineer, designer, researcher, it doesn't matter, in all of those cases, when you say that, I need this, I need this tool, I need a better work environment, I need something that actually, maybe it seems like only I benefit from it, but just the fact that I benefit from it and I'm then happier working on the project is actually good for the end customer because then you are more motivated, you feel, you feel that your team or your company is investing in you and you are more motivated to actually prioritize what the end customer needs. And the end customer also benefits because you are being more efficient. And so that's, that's something that actually makes sense. And um, this, I think, again, at this conference, I know you're going to hear a lot, lot more about sort of good work cultures. It really matters if a company has that muscle where they actually ask their employees, um, what do you actually need to get your job done? Like, what will make you happy? What will make you feel excited and motivated to come to work and work on tough problems? And I think that is, um, again, Self-advocacy, it's good for your career, but it's also good for the company because they are actually building that muscle where they normalize people asking for what they need. <clears throat> this part, I wanted to again highlight that, you know, maybe most of you already feel like you have the tools uh, that you need for, for advocating for yourself. Maybe that's what brought you to sort of your current positions. But I always say that it's, it's never a muscle that you should allow to atrophy. It's something that you are never done with. Um, even if you have had a very successful career so far, maybe you've had a great team, maybe you've had a great manager, maybe you've risen through the ranks, and you feel that, you know what, all the work that I do, it gets good visibility, people are excited about it. Um, well, all of that can change. Maybe you change teams, maybe your manager leaves, maybe you have a completely different situation, maybe, maybe the economy changes, which is what is happening right now. Um, and in all of those cases, you have to sort of adapt to that new situation. So keeping that muscle current of how you advocate for yourself is, is, really, is really useful because you are then going to be proactive about it. Um, legacies compound, so if you, are in a situation where you have 
created something a lot of value. Um, again, even if even if you 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 move on from that, there are going to be new situations where you want to make sure that your work doesn't get devalued over over time. And um, I know that there's some people who are CEOs and founders in the audience. Like everybody needs visibility. Uh, look at I don't know I w I won't name names, but there's so many people in the news right now, um, some of them could do a better job of advocating for themselves because they seem to not care about what the world thinks of them. Uh, but again, if they, if they did a better job of like really explaining why they make certain decisions and why, why that's good for everybody, it would make everybody's life easier and, and everybody's life easier in their company too. So this is not just something that individuals on a team need to do, this is something that even you know, very uh, <laughs> professionals uh, need to care about. <clears throat> so, um, come to the last sort of phase of my thing, like how do, you actually, how do you actually put this in practice? And so this is, again, meant to be a guide for either for yourself if this is a skill that you struggle with or for your teams. Um, so I'm going to walk through three, three pieces. So the first thing is just... Um, I had mentioned earlier that a lot of times what is actually inhibiting people from advocating for themselves is a mental narrative, which is that they're not, they're not really sure. Um, they have their own inner voice, which is, which is getting in the way. Um, so this is something that I think a lot of senior professionals resonate with, like, I am just too busy. I have so many things going on, and I don't have time for this other, other skill that I need to practice. And here I say that investing in your growth is important. It is going to be important whether you decide to pivot, whether you decide to do something different, whether you decide to amplify what you're already doing. But any investment that you make in your growth is important. It pays dividends. And it is one of the most um, important investments that you can, that you can sort of make in your, in your career. <clears throat> This one, I think, is, I, I don't know if this resonates with someone, but um, I definitely grew up with, with this internal mental narrative, which is my talent should speak for itself. Um, if I do great work, people will notice and people will reward me for it. And this is something that, like, you know, I think, I think definitely in my family this was repeated a lot, that, like, don't worry about the outcome, just do a great job and someone will, like, reward you for it. Uh, again, totally wrong advice. That's not that's not how corporate uh, culture works. Um, the example that I give uh, about this is it's almost that um, analogy of like you know shine your light, light brightly and the world will notice. Um, if you're sitting in a room by yourself and you're shining your right, light brightly, or your manager is not even looking and they're in a different room, well, it, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter that you're shining your light brightly. Um, so I always say that if your work is not visible, it is not going to be appreciated. So that's, that's something to sort of like counteract that, uh, that whole thing that my talent should speak for itself. The other uh, thing that I've heard very often is my work is execution, it is not talking. And this I hear from, you know, I've, I, I, I spoke to a couple of government employees recently, and they're like, if I wanted to talk about my work, I would be a politician, like, why would I be doing this? And, uh, you know, again, I, I was a coder, and coders also have that. They're like, hey, I didn't go into sales for a reason. Like, if I wanted to talk, that's, that's what I would do. Um, but here again, I say that I have yet to see a single job that does not require communication. There is no job in the world out there that does not benefit from good communication skills, from clearly articulating what you're doing. Like, you know, we, we, we say that, oh, like, if you're an academic, like, your job is just to uh, sort of uh, <clears throat> build, build cool stuff and do cool research. But uh, even PhDs have to get up in front of an audience and defend their thesis. Otherwise, their ideas will remain ideas, and they will never turn into something that actually benefits the world because nobody's heard about it. <laughs> so so it's, it's something that I feel that every, every job requires that communication aspect. Um, and so it's, a, it's an important skill to, again, care about. 
And the last example of the mental narrative is uh, something that, again, I've heard that why do, I need to, why do I need to celebrate anything? Why do I need to talk about the cool things that me and my team did? Um, it's just unnecessary. It's flashy. It's not required. And here again, I pivot it to you are not just doing it for yourself. When you are talking about the importance of your work, you are doing it for the whole team. You are trying to uplift morale. You are trying to uplift people who are struggling with the same thing and sharing the learnings and saying, you know what? There is light at the end of the tunnel. You can have success in this tough thing that you're doing. And it's, and it's super important to uh, just also take an opportunity to thank the universe for the fact that you are successful in doing something. <clears throat> So <clears throat> with, the, with the mental narrative in place, hopefully we can talk about the external narrative. And this is something that I actually made my team do. Um, like specific individuals on my team who struggled with, with, with pieces, I actually made them do this exercise. So an example would be, so this is just, you know, let's say you're talking about a project and you say um, the default way for many people might be to just downplay it that, um, you know, I did something, no big deal, anybody could have done it. And how many times have I heard people speak about their achievements in that voice? Um, I always say, like, hey, would your best friend talk about that project like that? Like, mm, probably not. Um, then there's sort of the complete other side, which is, uh, it comes in the brag voice, and it's like, best job ever. Nobody else could have finished it this quickly. It's like, you know, the complete opposite. And, you know, if that's your jam, good for you. Um, I instead reframed it like, you know, again, this is an example. Like, it's, it's, it's meant to be sort of a guide. But, like, really think authentically about what you did and why it was important. So breaking this down a little bit, um, learned a lot. It was challenging. It was fun, pushed hard and then calling out a tangible achievement that it was in half the time. Like, it, 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 it adds specific pieces in there that people can react to that highlight your achievement, hopefully in an authentic voice. And you know, this is, you should, you should sort of think about it in your own voice, whatever makes sense to you. But it's meant to be that call out things that are actually important, that actually matter. Like, why, why should people celebrate that the fact that this project has been done? Calling out that it was hard, that you pushed it, but you actually re uh, reached the end of the goal shows that you can take on tough challenges. Maybe next time people will give you more interesting challenges. And um, you know, saying that you had fun <laughs> while doing it, like that means you're, 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 you're OK to do it more often. So I think it matters to sort of uh, um, practice in your own voice what makes sense, what feels authentic, um, but what actually highlights like things that, that are important. You are doing yourself no favors if you downplay your, your achievements, and it doesn't, it doesn't help you get, get, uh, get more of it in the future. <clears throat> so with that, I leave you with a two-part challenge, which you can all try with your teams as well. Um, so first is, again, um, depending on your comfort level, I think some people prefer to start it on their personal sort of side, like you're not sharing anything publicly, you're just being very diligent about repeatedly documenting your wins. So um, I had people on my, like I suggested to some people on my team that like, hey, you know, every week, like on Fridays, just write down what you did in that week that was worth celebrating. Actually write down the details, like I did X, through Y and it achieved Z. So actually writing down that repeatedly over time creates that those themes. Like even for people, they get better at their own inner voice, which is like, you know what? The work that I do here matters. Every week I'm able to achieve certain things and like this seems to be what I'm good at. I haven't had much opportunity to succeed in this other thing. But it almost, um, it almost becomes this, um, like, if you actually write it down or, you know, type it out or note it down in one place, it becomes something that you can consolidate and use for your next promotion. So I asked many people on my team to make this a regular habit 
Um, and I'm like, you know, next time we have your self-review due, I don't want to see like one line. I want like, there's no, there's no word limit. So you don't, you don't have to write uh, three pages, but like I want you to feel that you have made the best case for showcasing, showcasing your work. And the final part of it is going public, because um, that is how we, you know, uh, just 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 share share sort of the learnings. Um, so here, I you know, I, I made a cutesy like hashtag humble brag challenge, just in case people wanted to feel a little better about it that this is part of something bigger. Um, so just find a place, like even if it's your company. Even if it's your team's Slack channel or something like that, like something where everybody talks. Um, in my company, in one of my previous companies, we used to call it Gratitude Fridays, where everybody would just share something fun that they did during the week that maybe involved another teammate, and they'd be like, you know what, we were able to finish this, and like so and so and I worked together on it. It was it was it was just kind of fun, um, but it's again extending your comfort from the personal to a little bit of the public. Um, some people like to do it on LinkedIn or Twitter or wherever, whatever uh, your chosen, chosen sort of place might be. But again, the point of it is to extend your voice and make it, um, make it, make it okay for yourself to share it publicly where it's not, not just yourself. And it's again a habit that I think people can build on and it, and it really helps. So with that, um, thank you all so much. Uh, we'll take some questions now, but these are some ways to connect with me if you have questions, comments, or stories to share. Um, I also have a book coming out early next year, so um, if you would like to sign up, it helps me get better deals with publishers, but thank you so much. Thank you. And to, to avoid the confusion we had, uh, we will only highlight the questions when, <laughs> when you already read them. So uh, let's start with the first one. These are the upvoted, most upvoted ones. So how should I encourage my introvert and talented co-workers to practice self-advocacy? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So I think my, um, you know, the humble brag challenge or whatever you want to call it in your teams is, is one way. Um, I really focus on, again, reminding those teammates to start doing it themselves like at least in their own words or in their own language, like they should hear these sentences that make them feel um, that they're doing something cool. Because I, I do believe that that's the first step, that once you feel comfortable that you've done something cool, you then get to that other stage of being able to post it. So normalizing a culture where everybody does this, where everybody sort of you know comes to a place and talks about mm -hmm. their work, like. Maybe it's a stand-up. Maybe it's a stand team stand-up where people just share like what was. Um, I think um, we used to call it like rainbows and clouds for last week. So it, <laughs> it, it's just a fun way to make sure that everybody gets comfortable with that with that piece. Thank you. How to self-advocate as a leader without making it look like I'm taking credit for my team's achievements? So that's an interesting one. Oh yeah, um, I love that question. Um, I think leaders are always in that unique position of uplifting their teams when they are, um, you know, like if your team is shown as doing good work, like that always reflects on you. So I, as a leader, always highlighted the work of my team and I always gave them credit. Um, but I also like, th there was obviously that subtext that like my team was rolling out work, great work, one after the other, um, maybe my like, you know, maybe there's going to be some people who think that like, well, her team is just awesome. She doesn't have anything to do with it. But I also try to sort of add pieces that hey, I've spent a lot of time with my team this week on this specific piece because we're all trying to get better at it, and we want as a department for us to sort of do this better. So I think one like your job as a leader is to highlight your team's work. Um, but yeah, actually find your authentic voice for the pieces that you do that are just uniquely you, and they're amplifying your team in a way. Thank you. How can I promote, oops, ooh, <laughs> wait. Okay, how would you apply self-advocacy when, oops, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think upvoting is happening. Um, how can I promote self-advocacy <laughs> in my team? <laughs> Uh, is that the final question? Yeah, that, yeah, okay, how can I yeah. promote self-advocacy in my team? Yeah, um, you know, again, like, um, 
make sure that also like, you know, the thing that I had mentioned about diversity and inclusion is there are going to be some people on your team who do it just as a default anyways. Like they're really good at it, like they're really good at talking about their work. So really try to find those, um, those softer voices, those people who are not as comfortable, mm -hmm. um, without sort of putting them on the spot. But like you as a manager, you as a leader can privately encourage that, hey, um, you know, in that session, like, or I don't know, like my team used to have this thing where every week people would present out like something that was relevant. I would actually encourage specific people. I'm like, you know, that project that you did was pretty cool. Like, you should you should talk about it in front of the whole team. And then that bring, builds that muscle of people just kind of starting to think about it themselves that, yeah, I talked about it and it was not so bad. So mm -hmm. it, it normalizes that as a, as a, as a trend. Thank you. All right, let's see if you have some tricks again. No. Okay. <laughs> how to self-advocate as a leader. Okay, no. Oh, this one. Uh, that, yeah, right? that, yeah, that was not removed. Okay. How would you apply self-advocacy when you're applying for a new job? Ah, yes. Uh, I have switched a lot of jobs, so I'm very uniquely qualified to <laughs> answer this question. Um, I think it really matters to one sort of... Um, I mean, that is actually the, the time when it's considered con completely acceptable to, to, to talk about your achievements. Um, I think the important thing is to, again, frame it in a, in a way where it's, it, it's not fluff. Um, it's, actual, it's, 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 it's genuinely focused on what you add. Like, really, like, one thing that helped me is I actually... Um, uh, whenever I'm looking for a job, I actually go back to my previous uh, job and like look through some of the feedback that I got. Um, some some companies do 360 feedback. Some companies, you know, like do a manager feedback. But I actually look for what do other people tend to celebrate about me, um, because there's some things that I think I do really well. But what is something that shines through? as uh, things that other people care about. Like, what does my team you know, typically say that I, that I do really well? And I think it makes um, it, again, one, um, it's, a, it's a true statement of like, here is what I think I bring to the table, but also here is what other people have liked about what I bring to that table. And I think that's a very, um, that's a very good way of just um, making sure that people, especially new, new, new jobs, new situations, understand your value, because it could be very much into the context of this very specific situation that you were in, but you want to show that it's translatable and it, and it adapts to a new concept as well. Thank you. Um, yeah, it sees the middle question got stuck, so uh, the new one is the one at the bottom. Is there any advice to people who are hard of hearing and deaf, working at IT companies regardless of their skills? Yeah, um, you know, that's, that's a really great question. Um, I mean, I unfortunately don't have a lot of, uh, lot of sort of specific advice there. But I think, again, for any, anything where you feel that you have some unique needs, um, I, I have heard from other, other people who had other, um, you know, different abilities. And I think being very clear and upfront about here is what would help me. Like, you know, your manager can be one of your best advocates for um, normalizing things that are, that are required. Like maybe they uh, change the culture where um, if, um, if, if you're in a meeting, like you're required to also sort of type out mm -hmm. whatever it is that you dis discuss so that it's at least it's documented, you're not missing out on some important information. Um, and you know you can you can you can either ask for just what you need as an end result, or if you have specific suggestions, you can always make them as well. Where it says that you know this is something that would really help me. Like we had a lot of our employees who um, worked on the East Coast, and they said it's really hard for us to attend these meetings that are at the end of the day. And you know once we knew it, like it's like, oh yes, we can make it. We can make it a requirement that any meeting that happens that requires a live discussion has to happen at a certain time. Mm -hmm. So just stating, um, you know, sort of the problem statement, like I can't hear a lot of people in meetings, it's very hard to keep track of the conversation. Like stating sort of the problem may be a proposed solution if you have it, but you should not feel that burden yourself. Uh, but at least like stating the problem can be the best way for somebody to actually help you reach uh, a solution that works. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. <clears throat> What is the difference uh, between self-advocacy and self-promotion? Um, great question. So I think when you are focused on self-promotion, 
you are only focused on sort of highlighting um, you know any way possible you you want to you want to sort of like present this grandiose picture and you you maybe don't care that much about the facts maybe it's just you you want to sort of um, just have that like larger than life persona i think self advocacy is again focused on things that you think are true things that you think are authentic and things that genuinely matter to you that if you are a good uh, designer you want people to know that you are a good designer and you should be put on good projects and it's um, you know some of some of their sort of components overlap um, but sometimes they don't and again if if you have weird too far on the downplaying your side and you want to overcorrect by going into a little bit of self promotion mode that's okay like i i will not judge you for it because i just think that society has uh, made it really difficult for some people to succeed um, and if you overcorrect for a little bit um, to get to that to get to that authentic space where you feel you're really talking about what you do well i think that that's uh, that makes sense thank you um, do you have or use any daily routine or any habit that helps you getting better at self advocacy yes um, so the example that i gave of the the weekly um, the weekly sort of you know writing down what you're doing um, i i do actually do it on a on a weekly basis i i do actually at work i try to write down those things um, because some part of it is also figuring out the gaps i think everybody figuring out that self awareness piece of what do i actually need like what is missing for me um, that's not working i spend a lot of time reflecting on those things it's almost like a gratitude exercise for me of like here are the things that are going great and it also sometimes highlights things that are not um, so there's a concept called career values which if you if you google it you can find like a list of you know i don't know 24 or values that you're trying to prioritize and i actually spend uh, i actually tie my weekly uh, my weekly sort of write up of what i'm doing to those career values to just kind of touch base with myself internally that am i am i working towards things that i actually care about um and when i identify that you know what this uh, this current uh, opportunity is not providing me something that is actually truly important to me because when i start noting things down i i see those patterns uh, then i'm in a better position to sort of develop my self advocacy where i then go and ask like who can help me get this thing that's actually missing for me thank you and depending on how quickly you can go through this one uh, this may be the last one <laughs> so how to celebrate wins apart from changing jobs <laughs> when colleagues are jealous um celebrate wins if colleagues are jealous um i i'm i'm not sure i understood the exact intention of this question but uh yeah i mean i guess like i would i would question um, you know is is it a problem if colleagues are jealous where they're interrupting your work or do you just not like being around that that energy because those are sort of two different dif different pieces right like if it's that they're jealous and so they're doing something that prevents you from being successful um then there's a different sort of way to address that that like one do you know who those people are or are they sort of like hidden people who are who are, who are sort of interrupting um your your success um and can you actually address it with them like jealousy often is it comes from sort of a place of um wanting to be in a similar position so is there something that you can do that helps them too like maybe they just they don't um maybe they have very similar wins but they're just not as good as celebrating them so maybe you can celebrate help celebrate with them as well uh, maybe you can maybe they're just struggling and they're not mm -hmm. getting those wins but maybe you can again be a collaborator and actually help uh, them to get to those wins as well so that it's actually collaboration because i i do think sharing learnings is very important um and you never want to be in a position where an environment feels toxic to you um for not a very good reason like you know if you if you are willing to help um i think people appreciate that i think you can get a lot of great work done um and i think yeah i mean you shouldn't you shouldn't have to change your jobs just because somebody is jealous of you <laughs> thank you do you think we have enough time for one more question i can take a stab <laughs> let's do uh, let's do that okay so who have you seen struggle the most with self advocacy 
Um, yeah, I would, I would definitely say, like, I think most of the times that I've given this talk, it's been to underrepresented groups. And again, I'm in tech, so I mostly talk to underrepresented groups in tech. But it is a topic that has resonated a lot with uh, especially women, uh, people of color, people with different abilities, uh, people of different, you know, uh, gender and sexual orientation. Because I think anybody who struggles with focusing on just um, trying to fit in, mm -hmm. like they have to worry about fitting in and then also sort of show that they're great. So it's, it's almost this tussle of like trying to navigate those two pieces. So I think anybody in the room, if you have people on your room, uh, in, your, in your team who are part of an underrepresented group, like they might care about this. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> and also thanks a lot for being here with oh, us today. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <clears throat> That's so good.